What's up guys, Claudia here checking in from the America server and this is going to be about the patch of the 24th of March which just has been applied on the servers. Now the servers are still in maintenance so I can't show any in-game footage but the patch notes are pretty long so can just go through that and um, yeah it's pretty long but I think it's worth it so bear with me. Let's just get to it guys. It's long <laughs> as I said. Okay so um, First, the boring stuff, there is a new APK file, so if you are using an emulator, you can uh, download that and install it to run the game. It has been working pretty nice for me, I had no crash issues since I started using this APK. Um, so hopefully the new version will be just as good. Really good effort by Vespa, uh, making it, it really crash and lag free for me, so kudos to them. Um, they say that you can install it just on top of your previous game, so you do not need to uninstall. Installing is just downloading the file and then running it, then it will do the rest. Um, I hope it doesn't mess up all the settings and, and save stuff that you have in the game. I said I couldn't test it just yet. If, if there is issues with it, I will post it in the comments and I will also put the, uh, the link into the description. Okay, that's it for the boring stuff. Let's get to the patch note itself. Now, this was just re-uploaded a couple of minutes ago by Lacrock, um, saying that they had some issue with, with the maximum post count and... Um, so they are re-uploading this stuff, but I'm not quite sure why, because um, this seemed fine for me. If there is any issues with it, I will check on it and just let you guys know. But okay, let's get to the patch note itself. So uh, Xera obviously was released with this patch. She's the main character, so to say, of this patch. Uh, we will talk about her in a little bit. Uh, let's go. There is a new batch of costumes uh, called Preppy Looks. We have Krisha, Esker, Priscilla... Laudia, Chase, Scarlet, Celica, and Zafir. I really like this rock band <laughs> team, and then Scarlet looks just gorgeous on this art. So, and they come with some new animations too. So this is a new thing that the the costumes, well, not entirely new, but something that they are doing more often now that we are having animations with with the costumes themselves. That's not too bad. Good stuff. But okay, I'm sure you guys were weren't really interested in that part that much. Let's move on. The Shadow of Aegina chapter is um, released. You need to have cleared the World Tree uh, part in chapter 9. No spoilers here. Uh, once you have done that, you from... Um, and you also need to clear, I believe, the the God King part in Aegina. But whatever. So once you, are, once you go back to chapter 6, you will be able to move here at 10... Two, and there is an exit that will lead you to the Shadow of Aegina story mode. This is a whole new story that you can play and it will uh, end by uh, the Devourer Shachmach dungeon and the Otherworldly Darkness Shachmach dungeon. Um, the first entry into each dungeon will be a tutorial, so, uh, so you will be able to learn how to do the fights. Now how it works, every midnight you get five tickets called the Shachmach Helm Decoration and you can have a maximum of 100 of these. So you don't need to do this for 20 days. However, if you reach 100, you will no longer be able to receive the free daily five tickets. Also, I read it in the shop notes that there is, uh, you can buy entry tickets like 10 of them for 1000 rubies. So essentially for 10,000 rubies, you would be able to get one entry uh, to Otherworldly Nightness Shockmark because, and this is a bit down here, uh, each time you clear this uh, Devourer Shockmark dungeon, you will have Shockmark's Wrath fill by 1%, and once, once this reaches 100%, you will uh, change your Devourer Shockmark dungeon to the Otherworldly Darkness Shockmark dungeon. But we will talk about those in a little bit, just wanted to let you know how it works. So basically, 100 clears will give you an entry to the uh, the big main boss dungeon which you really want to be doing and yeah there is, seems to be no other way to to make this faster that means 20 days until you can run it if you are burning rubies then you can speed this up it's clever I have to say it's clever by West but that uh, it's not like a direct bonus you are getting for or, or it's not even a gotcha really it's it's a bit like uh, resetting the tickets for uh, for trials for instance and just that this one you seem to be I think there is a limit on it actually how much you can buy um, but yeah let's just go on so 
uh, on your first clear you can you can after the first clear you can choose difficulty from one to four and after that you need to clear the, uh, them in a sequence so you need to go from five six and seven to be able to challenge the next levels um, the devourer of shakmak battle is an auto battle it consists of five waves and you will need to select eight heroes as shown here and yeah you cannot control your heroes they just need to go through it on themselves i reckon once you have a good team and you can just save up a couple of uh tickets and then go afk and just let them farm it until you run out of tickets um so yeah the shockmas ref uh gauge will fill up as you are using your tickets and once this is a hundred percent you will unlock uh, the otherworldly darkness dungeon but of course this dungeon has its own rewards which we have looked at in the preview they don't really mention it here but you can see it in 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 the entry part somewhere here yeah like so it has um, selectable rewards or at least that's what they promised uh, unique treasure fragments unique ticket frag unique weapon fragments um, the soul fragments and the fragments for the new artifacts which they have added to the game with this update. Now once you um, once you fill up the bar and unlock Otherworldly Darkness you will be able to challenge this big boss battle. Um, also you will need two teams here, one is the Path of the Sun, the other is the Path of um, whatever it was... Um, where is it? Path of Shadow but they say patch here, whatever. So Path of the Sun and Path of Shadow. Uh, the Path of the Sun is like a melee team and the Path of Shadow is um, um, is like a ranged team and you can switch between the two during the battle. So at one point you will be controlling four heroes but you can switch to your ranged team as the fight needs. I reckon the manics are made so that you will need to be switching between them. Now they say that these are completely separate Team, so they do not affect each other with buffs and whatever, which is interesting. How is gonna the melee team heal? But we will see. I'm sure they have thought of this, and I'm sure it will be pretty hard at the, <laughs> at least at the start. Um, now, at this otherworldly darkness uh, dungeon, there are two separate authority of the God King skills that you can use. One of them is, um, and you can use them three times per battle, and so for there is one the protection of the oasis which is on the path of the sun and the heroes there will take reduced damage become immune to negative effects and heal hp proportional to their max hp every second and this needs to charge for some time now the other option is wrath of the desert attacks shock mech reducing his mana interesting he has mana and corrupted power which is probably a mechanic of the fight itself uh, so this this will be a debuff to him it seems and destroys his shield so he has a shield interesting um, yeah and this also has a certain time of charging effect after its first use it can be char uh, charged additionally enhancing it all its effects so it seems like you can overcharge this after using it once which will make it stronger we will have to see how this works but for that we will have to actually run the dungeon um, once you have cleared the Otherworldly Darkness dungeon, you will be able to run Devourer of Shockmech again. Um, okay. And the Otherworldly Darkness dungeon will disappear. Okay. Uh, clearing the... Da -da -da. And when you clear... Uh, they don't really mention how this Aegeus protection um, works, but it seems that uh, the more times you clear it, you get more of these... Uh, a genus protection buff which is applied to the devourer of Shakmech dungeon and there are different kinds of buffs you will get so the first time you get like healing and the reduces skill cooldown uh -huh. so there are interesting so this will change the fight pretty much every time you challenge it but I think they made a mistake because this should be for other worldly darkness in the devourer of darkness we are fighting monster waves so I don't know. This looks a bit like a bit messed up here. But okay, let's see. In case that effect one is applied in the Conqueror Shockmech dungeon. Conqueror Shockmech, we do not have a Conqueror Shockmech. Uh, okay, so it applies to both of them. But that's not Conqueror, guys. 
<laughs> consistency. Okay, and uh, then we'll clear with the effect one. The next conqueror song will apply effect two. Okay, so yeah. So as you clear them, the next effect will take in place, which means that the battle will slightly change every time. Um, all right, okay. And there is the reward information. It's very tiny, I can barely see it. But yeah, there are first clear rewards and there are um, repeated optional rewards. It doesn't really say that you can choose from these, but that was the deal, so I hope they kept it. I guess we will see when we get there. Okay, so three new artifacts have also been released with the Shachmech. Um, they are interesting, interesting. We'll have to see how they scale and what they do. Let's check the first, Otherworldly Sword. Consumes 4% of Sav's current HP every second and disables lifesteal. Oh boy, uh, this is a whole new hell where you can no longer lifesteal. That really limits it. Um, for a lot of fights, because your DPS stands. This is obviously a DPS artifact, and your DPS usually stays alive by by life steal. But it increases the damage de dealt per second by 0.5 percent, and crit damage by 0.5 percent, and this can be stacked up to a maximum of 50 times. So, <laughs> okay, 25 percent damage and 25 percent crit damage when this is uh, stacked up to the max and obviously I reckon that this will be the part that scales as you increase this artifact. I'm guessing it, this part will also scale. So hmm, if you are running a, a dungeon where you have constant healing then this can be better than Book of the Mad. In part because there is no ran random uh, applied to it considering that this is actually a selector and not a random artifact but I hope it's a selector. Then this would be easier to level up than Book of the Mad. However, no lifesteal, and this is a continuous uh, self-damaging um, skill, so hmm, we'll see how well that goes, and how, how heavily this scales. Because if this goes too high and you get like, I don't know, maybe 10% of health lost every second, then you will, I don't know if there is any healer who can keep up with that. Hmm. Also, if you go below 25%, then you, the effect is deactivated. So I guess then you have to start stacking up once again. Um, also, this has a, a, a ramp up time because this is every second. So 50 seconds, almost a minute into the fight until you reach the full potential. That means that in some cases, Book of the Mad still will be better, but this can challenge it. And that's a good thing. Fewer cookie cutter builds, more options in artifacts is always a good thing. So yeah, not bad. Um, let's see the next one, Otherworldly Helm. Increases cells maximum HP by 20% and upon taking damage 3 times reduces damage there to heroes of self and two enemies with the highest attack. So if you take damage 3 times it reduces your own attack and that of two enemies with that have the highest attack by 50% for 5 seconds. This effect is irremovable and has a 30 second cooldown. So, this seems like a PvP artifact specifically aimed at Nyx and Miru, Miru like guys, I, I, it, it seems like PvP. I mean, if, if you put this on your tank, he will have, or he or she will have more HP and they will do like no damage, but they will debuff um, the two highest attackers in the enemy team. I think this has PvP all written over it. I don't see really much PvE use, but maybe, I mean, but it's just five seconds of PvE, not so much. Depends how this scales actually, I wonder. Does the time go up? Or does the HP go up? Does this go up? We will have to see in game. Because it could be interesting. If you can have a high uptime on this, that would be cool. That that would make PvE a whole different game, really. So, hmm. Alright. Um, Otherworldly Radiance, at the beginning of the first battle and every 10 seconds gains the Otherworldly Radiance that lasts for 5 seconds. So every 10 seconds you gain a buff that lasts for 5 seconds. And if this is still active after 5 seconds, so if it's not dispelled of you, then it will 
dispel negative effects from yourself and reduce all damage taken by 20% for 5 seconds. Uh huh. Okay. And if this is dispelled in the 5 seconds that it's active, then it will dispel positive effects from two random enemies, knock them away for 3 seconds, and reduce their mana by 800, so almost the whole bar. The damage reduction effect cannot be removed. Um, this also seems like a PvP artifact, specifically aimed at at the uh, CC teams. All right, curious. I'm not quite sure how well this will be yet, but I guess we will find out. And you can get these artifacts with the Shakme artifact ticket and all in one special summon. Okay. And yeah, you can craft those tickets from the dungeon. All right, um, let's move on. So Xera has her own special even dungeon that we will see. Uh, this is now running for, I guess, two weeks. That's the usual time. You can access it in the middle of Orwell. And there are five story dungeons and three special dungeons. Uh, you will need to re uh, clear the previous dungeon to unlock the next dungeon. Cleaning every story dungeon will open the special dungeon, so the usual stuff. And if you clear all the story dungeons, you get Xera for free. But you will only be able to run the special dungeons with Xera. Although they say later that this is fixed stats. They are doing some revamps, uh, mainly to Guild Conquest. They seem that the damage, the damage received by Tirfus and Lacrail will increase. So yeah, I guess they made it a bit hard. I know my guild has been struggling with it and they were very frustrated with it. So I guess it will be easier to clear them. And just after one week of... Um, of, of um, no, actually, it's on the 29th, so we still have time. But yeah, we had like two two weeks of downtime for uh, League of Honor, and now the next season is starting um, with some new costume rewards, and they are adding the previous ones to the um, to the shop itself. And we are this time the the three heroes, and it's pretty cool that they are doing the three heroes now. Um, they will be Ricardo, Lilia. And Kirze. Kirze is a bit so so for me. Lilia looks like just a re recolor of her usual skin, so. Hmm. And Ricardo, I don't know, it just looks like they just added a helm. It's almost the same as his normal costume, I think. Nevertheless, I really like this, this knight look in him. He is. If I didn't hate him because of PvP, I would probably really like this one. But it looks cool. It looks like a real knight, guys. And I'm always happy to see heavy armored characters because that's my favorite, really. Um, yep, new accessor accessories. I can pronounce that word almost. <laughs> that on Lockrock's head is just awesome. Okay, and the mission and achievement content integration revamp thing. Basically, they have removed all these missions and did new ones, uh, which you will be able to um, access through a new NPC hero, Estelle or Esther. They have written it two different ways already. Um, so you can see these under your profile. And you get some new guideline on how to level up and whatnot. And good news that they say that um, everyone will be receiving them. And there is a soul stone ticket, soul stone fragment tickets, brilliant eaters, unique weapons seven times, unique treasure five times. Uh, then rubies, crystal of power, world boss artifact, legendary ticket with three options. Hero and including the newest gears. Unique weapon fragments, treasure fragments, artifact pieces, workers are artifact pieces that you can obtain. Whew, that's a lot of stuff. So I'm really, really hyped. I mean, for all for new players, this is a big boon. It, they really are delivering on the promise that they want to make progressions for new and mid-level players uh, easier. And if the old players get this too, then it's kind of nice. Maybe I can spend it on characters that we didn't have the resources for until now. Um, and they are adding some new cutscenes for the birthday stories. We have Rehartna and Kirze for April. So, okay, cool. Um, League of Victory Shop will have Taily now, and uh, Hero Inn will have Kibera. There are some bug fixes. Um, 
So in some uh, some cases the mana deduction effect was not applied. Okay, and they corrected the tooltip on Tailies S3 that this power of the Shooty tribe stacks is removed when you use the skill. Okay, um, that was really long, and that's just the patch notes themselves. Um, so I said they have done two versions of this, I will check what they have in mind or what they have in store, if there is anything else. Now let's move on to Xera, the Herald of the Blood Moon. Um, so they have the her back backstory here, she's a wizard of magic type, and let's just check what kind of skills he has. So Orbs of Darkness, she throws six Orbs of Darkness, this sounds like Lilia to me, dealing magic damage to a random enemy in a circular range of the target. So six Orbs, random enemy, but AoE effect. Okay, when she is in this Darkness Awakened state, which, which we will see later, the damage is increased and the cooldown is reduced. Now, originally they were saying that there is no cooldown. Whether this is true or it's just re uh, reduced, we will see in game. And if you have Crest of Extortion level 1 in place, then it will this will remove shields from the target hit. So, okay, this is obviously aimed at um, flow, but trial of the flow, but maybe even Shockmech because he has a shield that was mentioned and um, perhaps PvP. We'll see. Okay, Crest of Extortion, her second skill. Dispels neg negative effects from self and casts Crest of Extortion that lasts permanently. Xera already pos possesses a Crest of Extortion, the level is increased and deals magic damage to a random enemy every 5 seconds. So imagine like Urzi's uh, skill 3. Now at level 1, if so, as you cast this, if you already have the buff, it will increase its level. At level 1, it will increase the damage of your S1 skill. At level 2, uh, this will de uh, decrease the activation interval from, from 5 seconds to 4 seconds, so she will deal AoE damage or random damage to a random enemy every 4 seconds instead of 5, and the Blood, Blood Moon, her S3 skill, will receive an ex extra effect. And then at level 3, when you have caused this 3 times, the interval changes to every 3 seconds, and the Crest of Extortion skill changes to Crest of Bestowal. Um, upon activating Crest of uh, Bestowal, uh, dispel negative effects from self, and you can do this Crest of Extortion to an ally with the lowest HP. The ally will recover mana, heal HP, and gain immunity to CC. That's pretty interesting. Hmm. It's not a damage buff, but it's, it's more like she has just become a healing wizard. Interesting. But of course, uh, it depends how often you can cast this skill and later we will see some more in the Transcendence perks and stuff. Okay, Blood Moon, Surge skill. Creates a Blood Moon for 10 seconds. For the duration of the Blood Moon, increases attack of all allies, reduces damage taken, constantly deals magic damage to all enemies, and reduces their heal rate. And if you have a Crest of Extortion level 2, then the boost effects to all allies is doubled. So, they don't say numbers here, of course, but Attack increased, reduces damage, and deals damage, and the attack and the damage part is doubled if you have a Crest of Extortion level 2. Now what we don't see, don't see is what happens after Crest of Bestowal. Will this remove your Crest of Extortion level and you need to like rank it up again, or does it stay permanent once you have reached stage, uh, stage 3? That's in, that would be good to know, we will have to test it out in game. Okay. Um, Darkness Awakened, up and using a skill, if Xera is not in Darkness Awakened state, gains an irremovable stack of Darkness. Up and gaining Darkness stack, Xera consumes the stacks to enter Darkness Awakened state that is also irremovable, increasing her lifesteal and dealing increased damage to non-hero enemies. When Xera takes fatal damage while in Darkness Awakened state, uh, the Darkness Awakened becomes deactivated, consumes entire mana and heals HP. Afterwards, Sarah cannot gain any darkness text for a certain time. So basically, if you go into darkness awakened state, you will deal more damage to non-heroes 
and you will increase your lifesteal, plus you cannot die. And um, also her S1 skill does more damage and has no cooldown or reduced cooldown. Okay, this is pretty brutal because when we go down a bit you will see that this is a lot actually. Um, but okay, for now. So yeah, that's her self-stacking buff. As she casts skills, she gains darkness stacks. After a, f a certain amount of stacks, she goes into this darkness awakened state where she gains additional buffs. Think of it like Chase, except that uh, uh, she doesn't consume HP or any such thing. Interesting. But looks cool. It could be really cool with fights that have burst windows. For instance, world bosses. Okay, soul weapon, you have to use seal kills a certain number of times, um, summons the soul crest and the, the enemy with the highest attack uh, will take damage for the duration of the soul, reduces target's attack mana and increases own attack. So hmm, we'll have to see how this looks. The first part looks to be like a PvP skill, but you know, PvP is usually too fast for soul weapons to activate, so I don't know. But we'll see how this looks once we have more info on the soul weapon itself. Now let's see the transcendence perks. So orb of darkness re recovers one orb of mana upon use. We don't know how much mana it is, but I guess this will be good when you want to spam the skill in darkness awakened state. So then you can just like uh, pop it on a repeat. Um, if you choose the dark pack, increases mana cost and changes the target to the enemy with the highest attack. So uh, this is the PvP version when you just want to nuke the other uh, team's highest attacker, if it's like a burst team. Um, second skill um, gains immunity to all damage while in use. <laughs> like really? <laughs> I, I don't know if this is just for the Crest of Bestowal or for both, but seriously, did she just get an immunity skill <laughs> on her, like immune to all damage? Jesus Christ, this is like um, Urzi on steroids, really. Um, darkness skill for the duration of Crest of Bistova, the, all, the ally takes 20% reduced damage, so... Um, okay. This is interesting because we will get into the unique treasures in a moment. Now let's see, Blood Moon, third skill, increases mana cost by one upon use, dispels negative effects from self, so <laughs> another self cleanse, and for the duration of the skill continuously dispels negative effects from all allies. Yeah, so her Blood Moon skill will increase the damage your allies do, decrease the damage they take, and continuously dispel all negative effects from them. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this is like Kane all over again in PvP. Um, I guess it has some PvE uses too, but Jesus Christ, Vespa. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Um, the Blood Moon Search skills darkness is increases magic damage uh, the enemy takes by 30%. So, if you wanted to use her in PvE for like a buffer, 30% is not bad. Yeah. Darkness Awakened. So while in Darkness Awakened state changes the damage boost effect against non-hero enemies to 100%. <laughs> Jesus Vespa, that's so broken. 100% in Darkness Awakened state. Jeez, that's that's really brutal, guys. So if you want to run her in as a DPS, as a main DPS, this is definitely something you want to take. That's a lot of damage you can achieve with her. Power creep, power creep, guys. Right? This is how basically Cecilia power creeped everyone else. Um, and <laughs> this is just in Darkness Awakened state, but still. Okay, and the other version, at the beginning of every battle, enters Darkness Awakened state and becomes unable to gain Darkness stacks for 40 seconds. So, um, they actually don't say how long the Darkness Awakened state lasts, but every, every time you enter a battle, you will be starting in that one, which is fun because that means in PvP she will be unkillable at the start. But of course, if she is killed, then she loses some of her mana and stuff. But it doesn't reset her skills, they don't say that. Now, <clears throat> yeah, there is her tier, four tier 5 light, and there is her 
tier 5 dark. Dealing damage with a normal or skill attack increases magic damage the target takes by 2% and that reduces their heal rate by 2%. This effect can be stacked to 10 times, so 20% damage and 20% heal reduction. Now if you check her unique weapon, Crest of Extortion Kaliosk. Increases crit damage and dealing damage with Crest of Extortion skill reduces the target's mana by... 500 and recovers on mana by 500. <laughs> so um, that's a bit brutal. I wonder how these scale. Probably all of these will scale. So, if <laughs> so as she does her S2, which can make her immune to damage, she will she will be siphoning mana from others. It will remove the target's mana and give her the mana. That's pretty brutal, guys. I'm not gonna lie. And of course, at the start, she will only do this like every five seconds. But still, as she casts this more often, it will be moved to four and three. Every three seconds, she can steal at least 500 mana from you. Okay, um, let's check the unique treasures. Um, Orbs of Darkness increases the damage and inflicts stun on the hit enemy. Now. This is only a one second stun, but remember that this skill can target the highest attacker in the uh, in the in the enemy team. So PvP probably, depending on how this 20% um, adds up, this might even be a PvE buff. Maybe, maybe not. You'll see. Unique treasure second skill. Uh, reduces cooldown by seven seconds, so she will be able to cast this a lot more often and changes the number of targets to four and increases the duration of the effect by two seconds so if you check this again so 20 percent reduce damage to four targets that's pretty good plus all the healing and cc immunity and stuff like that so that's that makes her a pretty brutal buffer if you get this one and again we'll have to see what else scales with this the duration effect, so you can keep this up indefinitely, the cooldown. Yeah, yeah, I can see the power creep in this character. Hmm. Okay, Unique Treasure 3. Recovers mana of all allies by 100 every second for the duration of the skill. So that's like 1 mana because it lasts for 10 seconds. And changes the heal rate reduction effect inflicted upon, em uh, upon hit enemy to 80%. Yeah. 80% healing reduction in one skill. Plus, there is also her her unique weapon, which stacked up makes it 100%. So, so I guess they just made her a counter to wall teams too, because that's 100% healing reduction while her S3 is up. Yep. Yeah. Okay, let that sink in a little bit. Oh god, oh god. Um, and unique treasure 4 skill. Increases the duration by two seconds and changes the duration in which darkness stacks cannot be gained upon receiving fatal damage to five seconds. Okay, so if you if you die during the darkness awakened state, it's only five seconds until you cannot receive uh, more stacks and get back into darkness awakened state, and the state itself increases the duration by two seconds. This might be actually her most powerful PvE artifact because it extends the duration of her Darkness Awakened state where she gains 100% hero and non-hero damage and you can make her start every battle in that state, which is dope. Well, no, you can't because then it's not 100%. But you could play around, like if you are using her for leveling and stuff like that, then pretty much every stage she would be starting in that state and and have it in increased by two seconds. So that could be really interesting. We'll see. I can see different builds working for her depending on the content you are doing and how auto-friendly you want her to be. You might sacrifice some damage potential, but make her always start in that state and just become a monster, really. Okay. Pretty, pretty dope. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's move on. Her special dungeon, which is opened from the 24th until the 7th of April, 
you can enter it in the middle of Orwell. That is a story mode. You get five uh, tickets uh, at the start, which is enough to clear her story mode. So if you go through it, you will be able to uh, obtain her on day one. And then every day you receive one. It seems you, you use the same tickets to clear both the story mode. After you have cleared it, you will be able to do the special dungeon where you can only use Xera herself with fixed stats. And there are some rewards. There is only easy mode, there is no hard mode. And you will be getting these art supplies upon clearing. Um, interesting that uh, the first clear reward seems lower than, than the repeat rewards, but whatever. And once you clear this, so yeah, it, it says here later on that you can, her stats are fixed and you can only use her. And the special dungeon clear reward is legendary fragments. So the first is uh, 350, and then repeated rewards are 60 art supplies. So legendary fragment that's for unique weapon, a random unique weapon, if I remember well. And this is the similar thing that we had with um, Pansy and I think even Kibera, or maybe not with Kibera. But we definitely had it with Pansy. Um, so as you get these art supplies, you can give it to her. You need to fill this bar here and you will get some rewards, which is stamina potions, soul stone fragment, brilliant eater, soul stone fragment, rubies, soul stone fragment. So that's actually a, a soul stone selector there. You can see all. So you can select a soul stone with it and half drawn paper which can be turned into mystical soul stone fragment, unique weapons, unique weapon, and her own soul stone. So yeah, you can farm this. It seems there is no stamina component. You only get these daily tickets, no heavy stamina farming required, which means I have no idea what I'm going to spend that 40,000 stamina on that I'm getting from that event, or even, which you guys may already have gotten. Now there is also a quiz event um, based on her story, if you, so you will need to enter a link which they have here somewhere in the post, yep, so this is a Google Forms link it seems, and you need to answer a bunch of questions about Sarah which you can find out from the story, you need to give your nickname, your game ID, and um, if you give all the correct answers you will get a random unique treasure ticket and some stockade keys, if you have three or below good answers, then you get some unique treasure fragments and one stockade key. So, yeah, I mean, freebies, and you just need to give some answers. I'm sure they will be up on the net soonish. Um, and if you just pay attention to the story, you will be able to answer these. So, it should not be too hard, uh, really. And finally, there are some events uh, going on. The usual stuff, Rune Preserve, Heroes in, uh, Dragon Raid, Gear Grind Bones, these will be activating in due time as they usually do. Wow, so that was pretty long guys. Um, pretty big update. Hope uh, the dungeon is fun to play. I can't wait. I, I think by the time I finish this game might even be up. Um, so. Let's get to it, guys. <laughs> Let's have some fun. I hope you like Sarah. I hope you like the new new dungeons and artifacts and everything. Have fun with the game. This has been Cloudy for now. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.